ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اله الاولين والاخرين وقيوم السماوات والاراضين وخالق الخلق اجمعين لا رب سواه ولا معبود الا هو جل في علاه واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فما ترك خيرا الا دل الامه عليه ولا شرا الا حذرها منه فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today i want to speak about i want to base the reflection on six munjiyat six things that will save you min fitnati dajjal that will save you from dajjal the antichrist the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us in the hadith that Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih, in hadith Imran ibn Husayn, <coughs> radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet told us in this hadith, ma, bayya, ma bayna khalqi Adam, there was nothing between the creating of Adam ila qiyam al-sa'ah, until the hour strikes, amrun akbara, a matter greater, Amrun Akbaru Min Dajjali Greater than Dajjal From the day Allah created Adam Until the hour There is nothing greater In severity and khutura And danger And fitna Than the Antichrist Dajjal And Imam Hakim He narrated in his Mustadrak And the wording is his That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said Fitnatun, a trial and tribulation, akbar indallahi, greater to Allah, min ad dajjal than dajjal. Meaning there is no fitna greater to Allah than dajjal. And one of the signs of dajjal's coming is when the people don't speak about him on the pulpit, as the Prophet said. On the member, the people they stop talking about dajjal. And when they stop talking about him, this is actually a sign that he's coming is very soon. And it's the signs of Dajjal's coming. So Dajjal is what? He is from the Akbarul Fitan wa Adamuha wa Ashadduha. He's from the greatest trials and tribulations. And from the greatest calamities. So what is it upon every Muslim to come with since Dajjal is going to come? Is that the person is upon Hadar? He takes precautions. He be careful. He be ca- he's careful. And that he follows these prophetic advices that the Prophet ﷺ gave us. I'm going to mention six things that every single person needs to do. That if the Jal comes, Allah will protect you from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one of it is Kathratul Isti'ada. That you increase in seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the trials and tribulations of Dajjal. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us to do that. And that isti'ada, seeking refuge in Allah, should be focused at the ending of the prayer. And Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in the Sahih min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا تَشَهَّدَ أَحَدُكُمْ if one of you does his tashahud فَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ أَرْبَعٍ then they should seek refuge in Allah from four things and the Prophet said he should say اللهم أو الله إني أعوذ بك I seek refuge in you من عذاب جهنم the punishment of the hellfire. 
ومن عذاب القبر and the punishment of the grave ومن فتنة المحيا والممات the trials of living and death ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال and also the trials and the tribulation of the antichrist dajjal wa min ahli al ilm such as shaykh al islam ibn al qayyim rahimahullah in his kitab tahdeeb al sunan he brings that it's obligatory to make this dua that is what it's obligatory to make this dua ismail ibn yahya al muzani abu yaqub al buwayti and others they bring that it's obligatory and they mean aim to shafi'iya that the person has to say this dua that is obligatory why because the prophet said ida tashahhada ahadukum fal yasta'id wal amru taqtadi al wujub the command of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam shows what obligation unless there comes a sarif a external evidence that diverts it from that obligation So some scholars they said that there is no other evidence to divert it from that obligation. And the Jumhur Ahlul Ilm are of the opinion that it's highly recommended that the person does it. So the first thing, the first munjiyat is to seek refuge in Allah from, from the fitna of Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. The second Mujiyat from the fitna of Al-Masih Al-Dajjal is the second thing that will save you from the trials and tribulation of Dajjal is Hirsu Al-Mara that the person strives Ala Al-Bu'di to be as far from Ala Al-Fitani Wa Asbabiha to be as far from fitna and anything that might cause it or lead to it ولذلك الإمام أحمد رحمه الله نريتي لنز مسند، and others have also narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said من سمع بالدجال anyone who hears of دجال and they find they hear that دجال has come out the Prophet said فليان أمينه then run away from that surrounding and that place if you hear that دجال has come out don't run to him run away from him Try to be as further as you can from him. أي فليان أمينه الراغب الأصبهاني من المفردات القرآن صاحب معجم مقاييس اللغة لسان العرب. They said فليان أمينه means أي فليبتعد منه. Be as far as you can from him. العلامة الفقيه محمد بن صالح العثيمين رحمه الله. He says that this is not only for the جال. It is also for everybody who calls to misguidance. Because the comparison here is the Jal will beautify the speech for the people. And he will speak in a very eloquent way. And he would even come with proofs and evidences. And the people will become mind boggled with what he presents. And so he's going to fool them. And so anybody who calls to misguidance or who places doubts in the people's hearts will also use the same method as well. And so as much as he needs to be as far from Dajjal and his surroundings, he should also be far from the other Dajjajila that will come before the great Dajjal. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّتِي It will become, or they will come out in my ummah, Dajjaluna, Kadabuna, other Dajjals who are liars. So the person stays far away from those people. Anyone who will call you to doubtful matters, those who will stick to the ambiguous verses and will not take it to the ayat which are muhkam. Allah said in the Quran, "Who is the one who has given you the book? From it are ayats and muhkamat. They are the mother of the book and other similar similarities. But those who have in their hearts فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب Those who have زيغ deviation in their heart they are going to stick to the verses which are ambiguous 
and they're going to dismiss those verses which are clear cut. So when they come to you, they're going to bring you those verses which are ambiguous. And they will make it look like that is the ayat which are muhkam. So the person, he stays away from it. Today, if something happens on social media, the majority of the Muslims today, instead of running away from it, what do they try to do? They watch it. They look into it. <coughs> I just want to know. I just want to see what took place. I just want to know what happened. وَلِذَلِكَ well, الْعَلَّامَةِ Ibn al-Qayyib rahimahullah he mentioned that this would only be able to work from it would only be able for a believer to run away from Dajjal he said that when he makes sure that he trains his nafs لَا بُدَّ فِيهِ مِنْ رِيَاضَةٍ لِلنَّفْسِ that he trains his nafs قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْبُعْدِ عَنِ الْفِتَنِ وَالْبُعْدِ عَنِ الدَّجَاجِلَ the person has to have trained himself in advance to stay away from anything that is trials and tribulations before. So that when Dajjal comes, you've already trained yourself not to run to him. But if you're a person who's curious, who always wants to look into things, Alhamdulillah, this won't harm me, I just want to see, I just want to know. I want. And then you tap and you look into it. Then when Dajjal actually comes, when Dajjal actually comes, then most likely you will not run away. You will run towards him. Because it's the same curiosity that's going to take you to want to see him. Also from the greatest things that saves a person from the fitna of Dajjal is The person strives. He puts every effort that he has to always revive his Iman. And yet he strengthens his Iman <coughs> because the Mu'min, the believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves him from the fitan. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala protects the believer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith al-Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih that Dajjal is going to come and he's going to travel to the lands. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is going to protect him from entering Mecca and Medina and the path to Mecca and Medina Allah is going to place Malaika angels يحرسون, how they will safeguard the path to Mecca and the path to Medina so what would he do? Allah wa ta'ala he said sorry the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said فَتَرْجُفُ الْمَدِينَةُ ثَلَاثُ رَجَفَاتِ Medina it will receive earthquake three times. Yahruju ilayha after the three earthquakes, a group of people who are in Medina, who were staying in Medina, and who are staying there, three types of people will no longer be able to stay after that earthquake. Sorry, two types of people will not be able to stay in Medina after that earthquake. Who are they? Every disbeliever and every hypocrite. They will be taken out by that earthquake. They will run away. So when they run away, the only people who are going to be in Medina are who? The Mu'mineen, the believers. So their Iman is what saved them from coming out of Medina. Medina is protected now from Dajjal. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, Yaqra'uhu The Prophet told us that Dajjal He has Maktubun bayna aynay Between his two eyes There's a writing on it Which is kafir It's written on there The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said Yaqra'uhu kullu mu'minin Every believer will be, will be able to read that Every believer Yaqra'uhu kullu mu'min Every mu'min will read it the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Katibin wa ghayru katibin Ama katibin wa ghayri katibin Whether he can read If he's a literate or an illiterate read a person He can read it It's through his iman he will be able to read it Ibn Qayyim says He would see what's written in between the eyes of Dajjal He can read it 
any disbeliever, any disbeliever, whether he may be from min ahaddin nasi wa absarihim, whether he be from those who have the sharpest eyes, who picks up little details, whether he be from the disbelievers who knows how to read and write fluently, he won't be able to read that day. What is it that saved and allowed the believers to be able to read what's written between the two eyes of the Dajjal? Their Iman. So Iman is what saves you from the trials and tribulations. It allows you to see him for what he really is. And then to be able to stay away from him. The believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to what? He's going to enhance his sight and allow him to see to see him وَمِنَ الْمُنْجِيَاتِ and from the things that save you from the Dajjal is الْحِرْصُ عَلَى الْأَعْمَالِ الصَّالِحَةِ to strive hard and to put every effort that you have in coming with righteous deeds وَالطَّاعَاتِ الزَّكِيَّةِ and coming with purified obedience and to strive وَحِرْصُ التَّقَرُّبِ إِلَى اللَّهِ to strive to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بِالْعِبَادَةِ with worship this is what will save you from the Dajjal the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the hadith that Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih بَادِرُوا بِالْأَعْمَالِ سِتًّا the Prophet said strive with righteous deeds for six things these things the righteous deed that you come with it will protect you from these six things الدجال number one righteous deeds it helps you from the jal والدخان and the smoke that will come the day of judgment the smoke that will occur ودابة الأرض and the beast of the earth there's a dabba that's going to come from the signs of the hour وَطُلُوعُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا And the rising of the sun from the west. وَأَمْرَ الْعَامَّةِ And the general turmoil, calamities that is going to occur. Righteous deed will protect you from that. وَخُوَيْصَةُ أَحَدِكُمْ And the mass death, death, deaths that will take place and the individual deaths that will also take place. The people are going to die on large scales. The righteous deed will save you from that. That fitna. It will keep you steadfast. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. The hadith of Imam al-Bukhari narrated in hadith Umm Salama. Radhi Allahu ta'ala anha. The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said... استيقظ رسول الله the prophet woke up ليلة فزعا he woke up one day in a state of shock يقول he was saying سبحان الله exalted is Allah ماذا أنزل من الخزائن what is it that Allah sent down from the treasures وماذا أنزل من الفتن and what is it that Allah has sent down this night trials and tribulations he sent down من يوقظ صواحب الحجرات who is going to wake up the inhabitants and those who are residing in this house? He was referring to who? Yuridu Azwajahu. He was referring to his own wives. Who is going to wake up my wives? For what? So that they can go and pray. Who's going to wake them up? And wake them from their beds so that they could what? So that they could pray. Praying is a righteous deed. And what has come down that night was fitan, trials and tribulations. And the praying and the righteous deed is what saves you from that trials and tribulation that night was set down. Also from the things Al Mujiatu Mi Fitnati Dajjal, from the things that will save you from the trials and tribulations of Dajjal. Is an ya'rif al-mar' 
that the person takes time out to know the characteristics and the reality of this individual, the Jal. And that the person learns him ala dawil kitabi wa sunnah, in light of the kitab and the sunnah. What did the Quran say about the Jal? What are his description and how does he seem like and what is he like? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, ma ba'ath Allahu min nabi, Allah did not send out a prophet, illa andara, except that he warned his people from who al awar al kadab he warned them from the one-eyed liar innahu awar he is one that has one eye wa inna rabbakum laysa bi awar and your lord allah is not one who is one-eyed maktubun bayna aynayhi kafir in between his eyes what is written is kafir is written in it and then what this hadith teaches us is Number one, that Dajjal is awar, one-eyed. But because he's one-eyed, it doesn't mean that this other side of his face doesn't have a eye. It's just this eye doesn't work. How do you know that? Because the Prophet wasallam he said, Maktubun bayna aynayhi, between his two eyes, kafir is written in it. So it's not like he has one eye in the middle. And that there's no other eye. It means he has only one eye, but he also has another eye on the other side, which he doesn't use or doesn't work for him. Maktubun, between it is what? Kafirun. Kafir is written for it for him. Also, the Prophet wasallam told us when he comes, he said, وَإِنَّكُمْ لَنْ تَرَوْ رَبَّكُمْ that not any one of you will ever see your Lord Hatta tamutu until you die In other words, no one is going to see Allah in this dunya So if somebody comes up to you and says to you, I am Allah And then you're seeing this person Then you, what you need to know is that You will only see Allah in order to die first You will have to die to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the Prophet clarified it for the companions The reality of ad dajjal what is also needed for the person to come with in order for Allah to protect them from a Dajjal is حفظ, to memorize al Ashar al Ayat, the first 10 verses in Surah Al Kahf, that the person memorizes them. ففي صحيح مسلم, in Sahih Muslim, عن نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, that our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Man hafidha, anyone who memorizes Ashra ayatin, ten verses Min awwali surah al-kahfi From the first parts of surah al-kahfi The first ten verses of surah al-kahfi Usima min al-dajjal Then that person will be protected from the dajjal Also, al-imam muslim narrated Min hadith al-awwas ibn sam'an The hadith is very long the Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith, and that hadith is long and it talks about the fitna of the Jal. In that hadith, the Prophet said, فَمَنْ أَدَرَكَهُ Anyone who is in the time of the Jal and he reaches the Jal. مِنْكُمْ فَلْيَقْرَأْ عَلَيْهِ فَوَاتِحَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ Then that person should read the first parts of Surah Al-Kahf. Anybody today who sits down and he opens Surah Al-Kahf and he ponders over its meaning, the benefits that he takes from it and the meanings that he takes from it is that the person gets to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts by saying what? Alhamdulillah, praises to Allah. And as soon as Allah says Alhamdulillah, what does he say after that? Straight after that, what does he say? Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba The first ayah talks to you about three things. The first of it being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi his messenger, Nabi Allah Muhammad. Ala abdihi al-kitaba, the Quran. 
straight away the person is being spoken about the three fundamental things about our our belief and our religion. Three things that the Jal cannot come with, and three things that the Jal doesn't have. So when the person reads it, they benefit from it. Also, what is mentioned in the beginning of Surah Al Kath is the story of a righteous people. And these righteous people were youngsters. Innahum fitiyatun amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum huda. They were young youths like us. They were young. But they believed in their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah increased them in guidance. So when you're young, Surah Al Kahf is a very powerful pondering and contemplation for you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabb al Arsh al Azim, the Lord of the heavens and the throne, that He protects us from the Jal, and that Allah Tabarak wa Taala also protects us min al fitani ma zahra minha wa ma batan. That Allah protects us from the trials and tribulation, that is, that which is apparent and that which is hidden. And as we always say, these reflections are meant to be as short and concise. The best of speech is ma qalla that which is short and also it gets to the point. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.